the job interview thing a lot lately, and the thing I hate about job interviews is they're not always looking for the most qualified person, they're looking for the person who does the best job of telling them what they want to hear. And just one time, one time, I want to go on a job interview and be completely honest with them. Answer all their questions truthfully. Like one question you get a lot is, well, what are some of your weaknesses? And instead of giving them the standard BS answer, well, I used to have problems prioritizing, but now I do blah, blah, blah. I want to be honest. Yeah, I'm not really a self-starter. <laughs> my mom didn't call me around noon to remind me of this interview, I probably wouldn't have woken up on time. <laughs> Personal hygiene's like a C minus <laughs> at best. And I tend to blame my problems on other people. You'll see that if you hire me. <laughs> Another question they love to ask you is how will you fit in with our team? Like, ooh, I'm playing for the Yankees now. Well, I see that you hire a lot of Latinos. Traditionally, they're very hard workers. So hopefully they'll do most of my work for me. <laughs> and I've noticed a few of them don't speak English, so I already have someone to blame when I screw up. <laughs> and my favorite question is, uh, what do you think will be the biggest challenge of this job? Definitely passing the drug test. <laughs> yeah, unless I can get some clean urine from the neighbor's dog, I see that being pretty difficult. <laughs> That's all the questions we have. Is there anything else we should know about you? Yeah, I'm not Jewish, but with the last name Stone and the curly hair and the enormous eyebrows, you better believe I'm not showing up on Rosh Hashanah, Yom or any other holiday on the title today. All right, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, and thank you. Since you're a fully grown man wearing a short sleeve shirt and a tie, I can tell you're going to be a total cockbag to work for. <laughs> Uh, I did really enjoy the relationship, uh, but there was one thing that I couldn't stand, and that was listening to her talk about her conflicts with other women. Because women will get mad at other women, not because of what they did, but because they did something without taking into consideration the other women's feelings. It's not always about what they did, it's that they didn't think about how it would make the other woman feel. And I got a little example, it's kind of complex, you guys gotta stick with me on this one, alright? All right, man, girls, let's do this. Okay. So girl A brings in an ice cream cake for a group of girls, but it's mint chocolate chip ice cream. And two years ago in passing conversation, girl B mentioned to girl A that she doesn't like mint chocolate chip ice cream. So now girl B is mad at girl A for making her feel left out. But instead of telling girl A this, girl B tells girl C this, so now girl C is made at girl A for making girl B feel left out. And then girl D comes in and finds out that girl B and girl C are talking shit about girl A. So she's made at them for making girl A feel alienated. And then girl E comes in and she's mad at all of them because she got left out of this cat fight. But really, girl, he's just a drama queen who wanted some attention and is looking for a reason to justify eating an entire mint chocolate chip ice cream cake by herself. <laughs> and that, that just boggles my mind, because here's the entire scenario with guys. Guy A brings in a mint chocolate chip ice cream cake. Guy B goes, dude, I don't really like mint chocolate chip ice cream, but I just feel it's weird you brought in an ice cream cake for a group of guys. <laughs> And you know where Guy C is in this entire scenario? Nowhere. Guy C is busy trying to get with girl E because she's emotionally vulnerable and feeling guilty of eating an entire mint chocolate chip ice cream cake by herself. Thank you guys, my name is Charlie Stone. You guys are